Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Hive 2. This is video three, and today we're talking about the preset browser. So to access the preset browser, click the button here on the top right called Presets, and we can always right-click it and set it as the default view if that's something that you would like. You can go ahead and do that. So on the left-hand side, we have the folder view. So if you want some bases, poly leads, mono leads, whatever it is you're looking for, these patches here in the center are gonna be those that are located in these folders on the left-hand side. So when we select a preset, now we have it kind of open. And we can preview the sound of that. On the right hand side is going to be preset info, right? We can see the name, we can see the description. So this one doesn't have any description written in it, but we do have some usage. So the mod wheel changes the vibrato, after touch is going to soften it, and we have different categories here and different features and character. So this is going to be in different tagging the presets, which we're going to get to in just a little bit. But just so you know, whenever you select a different preset, for example, you can see the different categories and usage and stuff like that that the author decided to put in that which is very nice. On the bottom right, we have a bypass effects, which might be easy to overlook, but if you want to browse the presets and have the effects off and just kind of listen to see what the sound sounds like without the effects, go ahead and turn that on. And if you're done, then go ahead and turn it back off. So before we go a little further, there's something I do want you guys to be aware of. So generally once we open up Hive, you know, we open up a new instance and then it's this default preset that we have to always change. So we right click the display port and go to init. And now doing that a thousand times gets repetitive and kind of irritating. So if you would like Hive to open up on a default init preset, this is the way that you're going to do it. So load it up and then go to the right click here in the preset, hopefully for the last time. And then go to this cog wheel here or this gear and select that here and then go to these uh, this wrench and screwdriver icon and down here where it says save presets to make sure you just probably says user folder right now but go ahead and change that to selected folder and then once we have that go to the preset browser and then put your mouse onto local and then go ahead and save this preset by clicking save and then here you want to title this default def D-E-F-A-U-L-T, just like that, and then hit OK and save that preset. Because every time Hive opens up, it's going to look in the folder local, and it's going to search to see if it finds a preset called default. And if it does, that's the one it's going to load up when it first starts. And if it doesn't find that, then it's going to load up with whatever the default preset is that Hive loads up as. So maybe you want something different. Maybe you want a customized init preset. You can totally do that. Maybe you want both oscillators in the mix here or something like that. Then make those changes and then do the same thing. Go to the local here or in the presets go to the local and then save that as default and every time we open up hive it's going to load that patch so thought i would mention that before we move on because that's kind of important so Moving on here, we have the factory presets from Hive in these folders one through 12. We have some MIDI programs. We have the third party, which is kind of stuff that if you collect the internet, it's kind of a place where you want to put those in into that folder. And then we have our user folder down over here. So if we're writing patches and we want to save those to our user folder, which that is suggested in the manual to do so, that's where you'd want to save them. And that's why we go to this cogwheel and then change this back to user folder. So every time we save a patch, it's going to be saved to that user folder right over there. Below that, we have different banks. So what we can see here that we have Hive Factory 1.0, 1.2. So the different re revisions or releases of Hive 2, these are gonna be the different banks of the patches that ship through that. So if you liked the releases from uh, the version 2.0, you can always select here and then go through those. That's an easy way to find them. And you can make your own if that's something that you're interested in. What's also nice is we have some favorites down here. We have one through eight. So let's say you're going through Hive Factory 2 and you land up on Nails. And you really like that patch here you think this is really cool and you don't want to have to find it every single time you can right click this here and let's say mark as favorite eight and then you'll see down over here on eight this one appeared right over here you can select this here and then you're going to find your patch in that favorite folder and you have eight of these which is kind of nice and uh yeah you can favorite your patches here so i'm going to go ahead and unfavorite this right here and then go back to the 2.0 so let's say, for example, I really don't like this patch and I don't want it to show up. I don't want to see it. We can mark this as junk by right clicking and say mark as junk. And now it's going to disappear from our view so we don't have to see that anymore. If we do want to bring it back, we can right click here and show junk over as well. And we're going to see this little icon over here, this little crossed out the circle red thing over here so we can right click this and if we do end up liking it here we can unmark it as junk and it's going to stay there which is a pretty cool feature in that sense right over there so next moving up we have tags right so let's go back to an init preset here let's add some unison okay let's save this here as coolest preset ever 
save that right over here and then let's go to our presets so in our user folders where we saved here coolest preset ever what we can do is where it says save we can right click this and say let's tag this patch here so let's say for example this is a lead we can select lead something like that and then we can say this is going to be lead digital and the feature is going to be poly because it's going to be polyphonic here and the character let's say it's going to be bright something like that and then let's close this so now you can see the categories where we have these tags here as well so i mean it's something you can do it takes a little bit more time if you really want to say organize maybe that's something that you want to do you could totally do that if you'd like to Moving on from here, also we here see the junk down over here. So we have other junk presets over here, which is kind of funny. And then we just did the tags and then we have an author. So this is the spot if you really like a certain author, a certain person that makes patches. Howard Scar makes some really cool stuff. So if you don't want to just browse his patches, you can always select his name and then just kind of go through those patches yourself, which is kind of nice. And another feature that is really cool, if you like this patch here, you can right click it and you can show it in the Explorer and you can actually see where that file is saved at and that goes for every other patch that you make or that you have in here. So what's kind of interesting, let's go to an init preset again, init preset. So let's say we're doing something like this, let's make something kind of, maybe something like that, bring down our sustain. So we have something kind of like that. So let's remember the sound here. So we're working on this patch and we think, okay, maybe there's something else in the preset browser that I might like, or we can go to presets. And let's say, so that's our patch here. And for example, let's say we want something like detuned punk. We select that and we start playing it. Like, okay, that's kind of cool. Maybe there's something else in here. Maybe bell seven is, is calling our, our self. I don't know. We click on bell seven. We're like, okay, you know what? Maybe I haven't found anything that I liked. I kind of want to go back to my old preset I was working on, but now you've recalled all these presets and you might think that you're lost, but you are not. This little restore button, you click this here. And we're back at where we started. So the way that works, right, is once we go to the presets browser, it's going to kind of save in a, in a state what our preset is that we have at the moment. And you can browse the preset browser as much as you want. But if you want to go back, you don't want to hit restore, and that's going to go back to the, the patch that you had before you opened up the preset browser. So it's actually a very, very cool feature right there. So you're not actually losing anything like that. And there's also the undo, like we talked about in the last video. If you change a patch, you can always undo it in that sense too. But I did want you to be or to be aware of that. And then we have from the directory, or we also have the tags. That's another place where you can see tags and click on pads or something like that and brass and so on. You can kind of eliminate different stuff by these choices and kind of just see what the patches are that you want based on these tags here and then we can click the x to clear that so that is a preset browser it's a little bit more than meets the eye you can kind of look at it and it kind of looks kind of simplistic but there's there are a lot of options in here to use and really to design the stuff that you want so yeah that was a preset browser there thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something we'll see you in the next video